to the Dr. Janine Show. So great that you are here with me today. Today we are talking all about EMFs. What EMFs are? Do you even know what that term means? I know it's a mystery for a lot of you. And we're talking about hidden sources of EMFs. So thanks for joining me today. Be sure to like click the bell and subscribe to this channel depending on where you're watching maybe you're on Facebook eventually we're gonna be on Instagram live as well and on IGTV so be sure that you like the video and share the video as well there's a lot of great information that I'll be sharing today that I'm sure you can help someone out along their health journey there's a lot of shockers that I'm going to reveal in this episode about a lot of the symptoms that are associated with electromagnetic fields and that's exactly what EMF represents. That's what it stands for, electromagnetic fields. And we have so many different sources of electromagnetic fields that inundate our bodies in today's modern world. And it really does wreak havoc on our health. And it's so important to not only know what the sources are, which I'll be talking about, but also the implications on our own health and the way that our physiology works in terms of being able to, you know, maybe mitigate some of that risk by decreasing our exposure of these EMFs. So I'm going to come back to some of, and we'll be talking about a lot of the sources of the EMFs, which I'll come back to. So first I'll list them out for you, but we'll come back to it. And also I'll be talking about the history of, you know, how different electromagnetic fields fields have affected our health on a global perspective over the years and certainly what's going on with the pandemic right now it raises the question is there a correlation between the newest form of the, that pulsed non-ionizing radiation being 5G mm -hmm. and a lot of speculation around the effects over our own physiology and more importantly to me how do we stay healthy how do we protect ourselves what can we do we can't get away from you know these things we can't get away from them and all of the electronics that we rely on to have a productive life at least most of us do but what can we do to decrease our risk and that, those are the things that I'll be sharing in today's episode. That's, thanks for joining in and let's get right to it. So what are sources and the common sources of EMFs? Well this is probably the obvious one, our cell phones, but also wireless headphones. So the AirPods and the wireless headphones, the Bluetooth, are another source of EMFs. Anytime that you have Wi-Fi and you're having to rely on Wi-Fi in the home, then that would be a problem as well, as well as microwave ovens. We know probably that's, I was at a party on the weekend and when I said EMFs, electromagnetic fields, that was the first question that came up. Well, are, is that microwaves? And yes, absolutely. We know that, you know, probably not one of the healthiest things and I'll be explaining why. As well as baby monitors. So this one we'll talk a little bit about and smart watches. So for people who have the smart watches and now they have rings as well that are that show, you know, and give readings as to what's going on with your body's physiology, that can be a problem as well and a source for those EMFs and wireless mouses, of course, your even your hair dryer has EMFs. So a lot of again sources that we wouldn't necessarily correlate to having maybe a negative impact on our health, but these are all of those sources. There's also, when we talk about laptops and computers, are also sources of EMFs and even induction stoves in your home could be a source of EMFs. So let's look a little bit at the history. So the history of whenever our human bodies and physiology have been inundated with a change of those electro frequencies. And it's really interesting when you look at this. In 1889, that was the inundation and the, the start of the high power lines. And lo and behold, globally what happened, there was a flu pan plant pandemic. Now in 1918, there were the radio waves and lo and behold again, what happened globally was the Spanish flu. In 1957, when the military started using radars, we had the Asian flu pandemic. In 1968, we had satellites and this was the Hong Kong flu. 
And now here in 2020, this is where, you know, there's been a lot of talk on this, the 5G and the rollout of 5G. And of course, our, our global situation, what's happening now with the pandemic. So we have to ask ourselves, is it cause and effect? Is there correlation? Again, we have to ask ourselves, do we get all of the right information? Maybe not always, we're not always getting the truth. So this, this show is all about, you know, those different sources of EMFs and, and we know we can't get away from them if we're being realistic at least in my opinion, but what can we do to protect ourselves and to decrease that exposure to the EMFs? So what's really interesting, which I want to share, is that is there electromagnetism in our everyday life, in our own bodies, in nature? And yes, there is. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to draw now a little bit of a diagram to explain this, which I find is very interesting. So nature is, by, by design, electromagnetic. So if we think of the sun in the sky, everything has an electrical charge. So the sun is more positively charged. And if we take a look now at a tree, which is interesting, is that the ground tends to be, and the bottom of the tree is more negatively charged, whereas the top of the tree is more positively charged. So everything again has a charge. Now when we have a rainstorm, what happens is that those positive ions come down in the rain and they're actually more positively charged. So I've actually read something interesting that the tree actually in nature attracts the water to its roots. Why is that? Because the roots are more negatively charged in the ground and the rain is more positively charged. Again, Mother Nature knows what she's doing and in her wisdom Wisdom, everything works the way that it's supposed to. Now, the only thing that's a little bit different here is that when there's an electrical storm, so in an electrical storm, what happens is that the charge changes in the cloud. So the top part of the cloud would be more positively charged and now the bottom part of the cloud is more negatively charged and when we experience lightning what's happening is that those negative charges now are discharged into the earth and hopefully it doesn't hurt hurt or hit anything. I actually have met two people that have been hit by lightning so it does happen. And they survive, so that's the good news. Um, so this is this is why they say, you know, you don't go near a tree near because the tree can be attracting. Of course, the uh, the top of the tree is positively charged; it can be attracting the lightning, and that's why it's not safe to be near a tree in an electrical storm. So it all makes sense, right? So the thing about humans and animals as well is that humans also are charged differentiates in different parts of our body. So our head usually being a little bit more positively charged as opposed to our feet, which could be more negatively charged and our hands are negatively charged. And it's, it's my belief that our hands are negatively charged for a reason. So when there's disease going on in the body, we come a little bit more positively charged and the hands have a negative charge. So anybody who does hands-on healing, when you go and see a chiropractor, when you have a massage therapy done, why do you feel better? Because the hands are negatively charged and they are discharging that healing energy because of electromagnetism. That's part of what's going on here, which is fascinating. So when I refer back to how we are electromagnetic, and then certainly when we have the artificial EMF, so whether that's from satellites, whether that's from cell phone towers and things that can have a negative impact on our electrically charged cells in our body. And that's why it's important to know that to think that we're not affected by electricity would be a huge misconception. We are affected by electricity and there's so many different sources in which now in our modern age that we're inundated with this electromagnetism that of course it's going to have an impact on our health. And that's why this is one of the subjects that I believe there's a huge, you know, it's, it's a missed part of health. We talk about healthy diet. We talk about taking our supplements and filling in the blanks. We talk about exercise. We talk about sleep. We talk about having a healthy circadian rhythm. We talk about getting natural sunlight exposure, which is a form of EMFs and probably the only one that our body was designed to deal with was the natural radiation from the sun, which has healing properties. And of course, too much of anything is not good for us. But take a look at our other video 
video uh, on YouTube and, and on social media on the benefits of sun exposure. And there's some, some jaw-dropping <laughs> truths in that video about why it's so important to get that natural sunlight exposure and some of the myths around skin cancer and things like that. So make sure you check out that video. But now coming back to talking about, this is again one of those missed things in our health that it's so true that we need to be able to have some way to protect ourselves from these EMFs because whether we believe it or not, our cells are electrically charged and it's so important that we're able to find this balance. So the other thing that when we talk about the physiology, so so we know that our cells are electrically charged. Well, there's something called a voltage-gated calcium channel. And studies have shown that it's because of these voltage voltage-gated calcium channels, that this is where there's a negative impact on our health in terms of EMFs. Because the EMFs, again, are, are an artificial source of this electromagnetism, and it actually allows for those voltage, the VGCCs for short, to open up and flood calcium into our cells. And certain cells and organs in our body have a higher influx of those that calcium coming in because they have a high concentration of these VGCCs. And those tissues are muscles, the heart tissue, the male genitals, so for fertility, which we'll talk about and, and touch on this, the nerves and our nervous system, but also the brain. And so when you think about the cell phone, and this is why I cringe, I watched a movie just yesterday and <laughs> in the movie the, there was a young girl, the daughter in, in the movie and the mother, they're always like this, I, I cringe if I see anybody hold up and I, I vis like loudly now tell people please put it, put it away from you, don't put that, that signal close to your brain because I know about the, the VGCCs and all that influx of calcium and that has a negative impact on our cells and this is why it's often, I don't think it's not discussed enough, I think what's going to happen now is that as people become more and more aware of the physiology behind, and this, if you look at the studies, I mean there are very recent studies about the VGCCs and, and Martin Paul is, is one of the, the you know, the four runners in terms of this type of research and he has found that there are seven effects which are reportedly absolutely connected to the VGCCs and Wi-Fi and other EMF exposures in terms of the, the negative effects on health. As well as when we talk about, you know, the, the impact on the different diseases, often it's because of that too much of that calcium is getting into the cells. And, and what that does is that can actually, the way that I picture it, because I'm a very visual person, is it can actually blow up your mitochondria. So all of this calcium goes into the mitochondria, pushes out on the cytoplasm, and, uh, and it gets into the nucleus as well, and just wreaks havoc on our cells. So that, what does that mean? That means when your mitochondria are destroyed, then you're not able to age gracefully. We need healthy mitochondria, and so is this anti-aging to decrease our EMFs? Yes, absolutely. What about when you, we talk about healthy DNA and, and keeping our cells healthy? Well, it can blow, blow apart your DNA as well. So really, really important in terms of, you know, the correlations with cancer and other diseases that, you know, that we really delve into and look at the physiology behind the EMFs and what they're actually doing to our bodies. So this is part one of our journey on EMFs. Part two will be next week and I'll come back and I'll talk a little bit more about the physiology and the VGCCs because it's really to me very interesting and I think when we understand it we can really correlate you know some of those symptoms and, and you may be watching and you're thinking okay this um, I want to know what are those symptoms because you may not have known that whether it was your headaches would be one symptom of EMF sensitivity could be related very much to the EMF exposure that you have in your home and we're going to go through all of those different exposures it's not just the cell phone there are so many different exposures in the home that we can you know we'll, we'll, I'll talk about today so that you can help to decrease that exposure nosebleeds would be another one and this is this is been found in, I was reading a report about some 5G towers that were installed on top of a building where people were living and a lot of the people living there 
first develop sleep disorders, so that would sleep disturbances and insomnia, that's another symptom of EMF sensitivity, but they, a lot of them were getting nosebleeds out of nowhere, and they hadn't suffered nosebleeds um, at all before previously in their lives, as well as the headaches as well, was one of the, the common complaints in, in the building that was reported um, in, in the U.S. As well as low energy is another symptom of EMF sensitivity, dizziness and feeling, you know, unsteady on your feet. There could be skin burning and itchiness. So if you have an exposure to something, um, certainly on the skin, I've experienced this with the smartwatches or people that use a cell phone on one side of, of their head, uh, they can develop what looks like a rash and it's just because of the EMF exposure from the cell phone. Ringing in the ears, so tinnitus um, is another common complaint as well as even now getting into the mental emotional depression brain fog and anxiety. So in the Netherlands, what I found this is crazy that you didn't he probably hear about was that um, in The Hague, so they were actually doing a rollout and testing in The Hague um, in the Netherlands about the the 5G and the exposure to 5G and the population, believe it or not, and of course they would test here because there weren't many people, but there were cows. And the population in 2017, when they were doing the testing, was only 45 people. So 45 humans lived in the hug. And this is something that they were testing the Wi-Fi and I guess it was, you know, straight fields, so not a lot of hills and things, straight fields so that they could test how, how strong or how potent and the efficacy of the 5G. And a lot of the, so five dairy farmers were actually reporting that their cows were going cuckoo, they were going nutso, and it suffered a lot of anxiety and just had a complete behavioral change and they of course correlated it to the 5G. Um, so something to think about. So if it does that to cows and other animals, then, you know, and, and I'll talk about birds in just a second. Um, so there were, the, anyway, I'll get to that in just a second. But also decreased memory could be related to EMF exposure and certainly, you know, mental, emotionally, if we think about low mood and depression and all the fears, and it's specifically what's happening now in the world with the pandemic and everything that we're going through anyway, I mean, how much is correlated to that EMF exposure that nobody is talking about. Some other hidden dangers now in terms of that correlation between the EMFs, and these have been studied, so it's not like this is something that, you know, we're, we're just talking about. These things have been studied, so the correlation with the aging process, Alzheimer's disease, infertility because remember especially male infertility because there is a concentration of the VGCCs in terms of that ca too much calcium influx getting into the cells and cell destruction in the male genitals so that only goes to show that infertility and and decrease in fertility is definitely related to EMF so one tip here just in case I forget I in case I don't get to it later on, is that guys, you do not carry your cell phone in your pocket, especially if you want to can, you know, have children someday, or if you're in the childbearing years and you and your partner want to have children, do not carry your cell phone in your pocket around your, your <laughs> organs, because again, that direct correlation with fertility because of the damage to the and to the cells because of the influx of that calcium. Cancer as well. So I again when we talk about, you know, the the actual studies with which is related to cancer in the EMFs, certainly there's a specific type of brain tumor called a glioma and the risk for that glioma has been studied and this study shows that the RF radiation should be regarded as a human carcinogen causing glioma. So yes, it is in the literature and you can look this up yourself. Um, there's, you know, again, when we talk about specifically for children's health, because if you think of a child's brain that's growing and certainly, I mean, everybody's sensitive to EMFs, but certainly a, a growing brain and, and, and spinal cord in a child is definitely more sensitive. And the study showed that 
in you know the the effects of, of the cell phone on children's and adolescents health and the brain is the main target organ uh, for the RF emissions from the handheld wireless wireless phone so kids should not have cell phones and they should not be receiving calls on cell phones I mean it's just it and again in this study they showed um, and stated that it's a possible in brackets human carcinogen so again we have to ask ourselves why why are we letting our children carry cell phones and receiving calls and you know really to decrease the risk this is something that we have to be more um, I think <laughs> The word I'm looking for is, you know, we have to we have to make the positive changes for ourselves and for our children, and, and be astute when we're trying to, you know, decrease our risk, especially when we're talking about our children, as, as well as when we're talking about sleep disorders. So this has been studied, and in terms of kids coming back to the kids again, the ADD, ADHD, even autism. So autism again, a study was was done about how wireless technologies may affect childhood development and specifically they were looking at retarded symptoms of retarded memory, learning, cognition, attention and behavioral problems and this has been you know reported and similarly manifested in autism and attention deficit hyperactivity disorders as a result directly of the EMF and RFR exposures. So again, having genetic effects and damage to DNA as well, I mean, this is scary stuff and it's something that we definitely have to do more research on, but as much as we can decrease our exposures for ourselves, we have to do this for our children as well. The eyes, so cataracts, and it's a specific type of cataract that, that develops in the outer portion of the lens of the eye, not the traditional opacity of, of the inside of the lens, which happens with free radical damage, with aging, with smoking, but this is then, researchers have found that the outer capsule of the lens is affected by EMFs, so again, think cell phone beside our, our eyes not not probably the best thing and heart disease too so that's another area that you know researchers have looked at so what are the exposures where do we get the AMS from so we know for sure the cell phones and now I'm going to give some tips on how to decrease our exposure of all of these sources of EMFs and, and how to do it you know to the best of our ability so one of the tips that I do whenever I know that I you know I'm in a place where I don't want to receive calls I put my phone on airplane mode and airplane mode certainly you know, find that on your phone if you've not done it before, you've not traveled. Most people haven't traveled so much in the last little while, so, um, but put it on airplane mode and that's one of the best things that you can do, especially for the kids and the kids' devices to, to be able to do that even on your on your watches so and if you have the rings that you know measure what's going on with your physiology and that's of course attached to your phone um, or as a Bluetooth device make sure you set it to airplane mode only if you need to receive a call or make a call then you take it off briefly and then put it back to airplane mode especially when you're sleeping so one of the things to do is to decrease your exposure anything in your bedroom because if you think of the period of time it's a long period of time that you are in your bedroom you definitely want to decrease your exposure to any EMFs when you're sleeping because that's a big chunk of your day so decreasing that that exposure especially try not to have anything plugged in near your head in your bedroom and not close to your bed so if you've got you know plugs and things plugged in then you want to decrease that exposure by don't charge your phone this is tip number one don't charge your phone in your bedroom if you can charge it elsewhere in your house when you're you're sleeping you don't need your your phone by by your bed when you're sleeping because you need to sleep and that goes into my whole talk about circadian rhythms and getting a, a restful night's sleep um, to be able to do that the other thing is with if you think that it's better to have the devices in your ears so the airpods or the bluetooth devices in the ears not the best thing what one of the things that you can do is if you absolutely have to use it is just to use one at a time because if you think about it they communicate with one another so if you've got two 
of the earbuds in your ears, then not only are they having to have a signal with your phone, but they're also having to have a signal with each other, and that's transmitting that EMF right through your brain. So again, not something that I recommend. Uh, an alternative to using the air buds would be the air tubes or a wired. So wired is not the best, but still much better um, in terms of, of having that EMF exposure. But air tubes exist as well as earphones and it's just an air tube. So there's no EMF that would go through that. Now Wi-Fi. I know we can't live without Wi-Fi with my kids, especially, you know, you go anywhere and that's the first question, what's the Wi-Fi code? And that's just the world that we live in. But the Wi-Fi routers are definitely an area of exposure to EMF. So one of my tips is if you can, turn off your Wi-Fi router at nighttime when you're sleeping. If you don't need it, then turn it off. Again, that's a big chunk of time of your day and turn off that Wi-Fi router. The other thing you can do is either purchase or make a Faraday cage. So a Faraday cage based off of Faraday, a man who discovered that in a closed metal box or cage that there is no EMFs. And this has been studied if you think of when you go onto an elevator, which is usually metal, that you lose your cell phone signal. And that's basically the just like a Faraday cage. And that's because the EMFs are blocked out. So you can actually create these things. And this will be a future post that will show you how to make your own Faraday cages and, and a relatively inexpensive way to do it and there's special fabrics that you can buy but there's there's really great ways that you can do this to to decrease that exposure especially ar around your Wi-Fi router and whenever you can you know do something wired in your ho home so whether that's for your computers um, for anything that that is possible that an electronic has a wire then the wire is definitely a better way to go versus having it on a Wi-Fi and connected it in that way. Microwaves. So microwaves we know are not healthy. We got rid of ours in our home a few years ago and we found an alternative which is a steam convection oven and this thing is fantastic. It is relatively the same cook time without the microwave and the mi if you do have a microwave, I mean really it's not safe anywhere in your home. You need to be at least, some people People say at least a hundred feet away from a microwave for it not to have an EMF effect on you and one of the things and this is something that I tested myself so I bought you know uh, an EMF reader and the first day that I got this <laughs> into my office it was so funny everybody was laughing at me because I was going up to everything and lo and behold I mean the EMF exposure that I unbeknownst to me was incredible and I actually had something that was wired and it was right beside me as um, a protective thing for if, if this a surge protector and this thing was like radiating out all this EMF and it was right beside my work desk. I wouldn't have known if I didn't have this. So you can buy, certainly there's better ones, but you can buy an EMF reader and then sort of, sort of see where your exposures are, especially in areas of your home or your office where you're spending a lot of time. And I, of course, I spent hours and hours at my computer, which had a reading, of course, so I try to sit a little bit away from my computer. I have it wired. I don't use the Wi-Fi on my desktop. I had the surge protector removed. I had my husband just haul it, get this thing out of here. This thing has been like frying me for, for years unbeknownst to, to because we didn't know um, so wherever again try to decrease your exposure and you'll end up feeling a lot better I mean that's why I'm doing this show in the first place because if you're not feeling well you're lacking in energy you get headaches maybe you get a nosebleed maybe you feel dizzy once in a while maybe you've got a disease that you've been diagnosed with absolutely or you want to prevent disease that's why I'm sharing all of this information so that you can decrease that exposure so coming back to the microwave, so I took the, my EMF reader and was checking the different things in our home and the microwave was like blew my mind because I always knew that they were bad. Um, but we got, we put it in the basement and I thought, okay, let me just test this thing. We kept it just for a rainy day in case we're ever going to use it, but we don't use it to be honest. So anyways, I'm like, okay, let me test this thing. So I went down and I, I checked and yeah, it was bad. Even when I was standing, you know, 10 feet away from it, I was still getting a reading. Most other devices, I have to actually go up to the device to get a reading, but the, the microwave was horrible. But I love the steam convection oven um, so that it's a great and it heats things up quickly and it uses steam and it is fantastic. So that's a great substitute for your microwave. 
Baby monitors. Now, this is something that, you know, it was shocking <laughs> to me to think that, and I, I didn't ever really use baby monitors. I think one of my advice here is to use your own internal as a mother or as a father, your own internal intuition um, to have that sense of when your baby, I don't know, myself after having four babies, and we have five children all together, but after having four babies <laughs> in the home and you know, I, I'm my own baby monitor because my intuition, my ears, everything perks up when you have a baby. That was my experience anyway. But um, to be able to have that connection, not needing to use something that is is an electronic to be to monitor your children, certainly I think is the mother nature's way of of monitoring our children but if you need to have that peace of mind and a baby monitor there's certainly safer ones and whenever it's wired it's definitely better to ensure that you know it's not giving off the EMFs close to your young baby who of course is super sensitive to that EMF exposure. So another thing would be the smart watches and the rings, which I touched upon before. Just make sure that you put them on airplane mode. That's really important. And it's a simple thing to do to minimize your exposure. If you don't need to wear it, then certainly don't, uh, don't wear it because that will help to decrease your exposure. Induction stoves. So this, yeah, again, you wouldn't think, but yeah, because of the, the induction stove, if you can go with gas, certainly much better in terms of your EMF exposure. Wireless mouses, so if you're using your, your computer, you've got the wireless mouse, then definitely go with wired. It's much better for that EMF exposure. And hair dryers, so even hair dryers, we can't even dry our hair without being exposed. So if you can air dry your hair as much as possible. So what I try to do is air dry, you know, for, for most of that time. Yes, it takes longer and it's, you know, but less of that, that EMF exposure and just touch it up with the hair dryer at the end. Um, to style it is the way that I try to do it as well as now when we're talking about all of our technology so whether that's our laptops our desktops try to make sure that it's wired to the internet and not using Wi-Fi but there are special pads that you can use to put on your lap to protect yourself from the EMF exposure um, if you need to use a laptop but laptops are not for laps that's that's my suggestion. I mean, they're not. They should be, you know, at, at a distance from you to minimize that exposure that you're getting of the EMFs. Another thing that you wouldn't think of necessarily, clock radios. So if your clock radio is plugged in, um, yes, it's wired, but it's actually better to unplug it and use the batteries so that it's, it's not wired into your system because even you're getting EMFs and there's something called dirty electricity in your home uh, because of exposure to anything that's plugged in. So yeah, trying just our best to minimize. So if you need a clock radio um, or an alarm clock to wake you up in the mornings, so that's going to be a future episode that I'll be talking about circadian rhythm and really what you should do is have an alarm to go to bed but not to wake up. You should be able to wake up naturally with your circadian rhythm with the rising of the sun and the change of your hormones and your the switching off of your melatonin and the increase in your serotonin and dopamine and all those great you know neurotransmitters in the brain. That's a whole other episode but I, I will surely be talking about that on a future episode here on the Dr. Janine Show. So if you're liking what you're hearing please give me a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it and please share this video it would really mean a lot to me if you can I know it's a lot of information and a lot of new information for a lot of you I've done a ton of research into EMFs and continue to do that and I'm even surprised you know on a daily basis when I see the correlations between things and the things that I've seen in my patients over the years and and to think that it was you know something I'm going to say simple. It's not simple. Um, it's unfortunate, but something as simple as that, that EMF exposure that caused the cells to have this, you know, negative physiology, if I put it that way, and could have sort of turned on certain mechanisms going towards disease, which of course is the opposite of what we want. We want to prevent disease and we want to do things as naturally as possible. Another exposure is smart meters. So this one, again, I even personally was was not happy to to have a smart meter on the home and but there are things that you can do to actually to 
decrease your exposure. So you can actually build a Faraday cage around your smart meter to decrease your exposure. But they're connected to Wi-Fi. So again, you're getting pulses of signals of Wi-Fi. And that's, so if you don't know what a smart meter is, that's what's reading um, your usage in your home of, of your hydroelectric and you know if you you know it's a smart meter by looking at it and usually it will have a digital screen um, not like the old school ones that were more mechanized so anyway do your best to find out if you have a smart meter if you do if your if your usage is tracked at different times of the day then most likely you have a smart meter and there is some EMF exposure there that's coming into your home which you definitely want to protect yourself from that so yeah that was it so next week in the next episode I will be talking a lot about you know what's happening with the the VGCC's the voltage gated calcium channels and how that physiology affects specifically different disease conditions but even things like anti-aging and it's something that I've talked about for years when I talk about vitamins and things and making sure that too much calcium is not getting in to our cells we want to protect that mechanism and one of the great things to do that is magnesium so magnesium is like a natural calcium channel blocker and interestingly enough what they found is that researchers have found that by giving conventional calcium channel blockers which is not something that I recommend in terms of pharmaceuticals anybody who knows me you know that I'm I'm not big on drugs and pharmaceuticals when you know when there's a more natural way to approach things but the researchers found by giving the the calcium channel blockers it mitigated so completely stopped the negative effects of EMFs interesting to know so one of our natural calcium channel blockers is magnesium so that's in a very important supplement I'm going to be talking a lot about that in part two so next week at 12 noon I'll be sharing a lot about magnesium about how do we protect ourselves what supplements can we take what can we do with our diets what things can we eat you know what can we do naturally to decrease our our negative impacts of those EMFs on our body um, we'll also be talking a little bit about you know again looking back at the physiology but looking back at some trends that have happened over you know over the years with exposures to EMFs and how it's a little bit covered up I'm gonna be honest in terms of the fact that you know some of the, the negative things that have been researched you just simply haven't heard about them and why is that so we'll talk a little bit about that as well so thanks for joining me today. It was a great episode and I, you know, I continue to learn about EMFs. I think it's something that we all have to stand up and speak up about and our exposures. Definitely now that you'll be paying a little bit more attention to maybe where your exposures are in your home, that's something that you can do. You can certainly, you know, use an EMF reader. There's certain companies that come in that can come into your home as well that you can hire to to see where you're getting that EMF exposure. Um, one of those other things is the smart home. So anything that's smart and connects to Wi-Fi in your home is that again a potential source of that EMF exposure even light bulbs now so those smart light bulbs which is something that we even considered getting in our home um, and we decided against it because of that again that exposure to the EMF and so think about your children think about your own health especially with children that you know they have sleeping issues they have sensitivities they can't focus well uh, are they on devices? Are they in an area when they sleep at nighttime that, you know, doesn't have a lot of electromagnetism and, and that exposure? It really has a lot to do with their overall health and preventing diseases. We look at autism as well, which is something I want to touch on next week in our episode about, you know, that EMF exposure and the correlations with the autism. And you have to ask yourself, well, autism, when I was a kid, it wasn't something that was, you know, really talked about uh, diagnosed the the rates were you know next next to nil and now all of this inundation and think about all of our electromagnetism and you know all of our exposures to our, our more technologically advanced life um, what that's doing to and impacting and how that's having that impact on our cells
So thanks for joining me today. Remember to like, share, give me a big thumbs up on the video, share this video with your friends. You can always, I, we were live right now, but you could, it's gonna be archived, so you can always refer back to it. And, and share the information with someone that you think may be suffering and unbeknownst to them that it could be related to the EMF exposure. And I'll be sharing a lot more tips in next week's episode on how to mitigate that risk and, and how we can take care of ourselves internally to decrease those negative impacts on on our health. So thank you for joining me today. This is the Dr. Janine show. It was glad I was so glad to have you here with me today and we'll see you next week at 12 noon on Monday.